So what we're going to keep in mind here is, is this is the cube root, and then we're going to square it when we're done. This is the cube root, and then we're going to raise to the fourth when we're done. Okay? So anything that, um, that has a rational exponent, the top number is what blows it up. You've got to take time itself that many times. The bottom number tells me cube root, square root, fourth root, something like that. Um, okay. So before I go any further... You did 42 too? What's 42 too? 16807? You accidentally put your book on your brightness. Oh, I did? Yeah. On my brightness? Yeah. I don't know. Oh, this brightness. Oh, okay. Okay. That's Got it. Some sort of I gotcha. Okay. So 16807. Okay. So this is the square root, which gives me 7, then i got to raise to the fifth power. Are you guys good with your calculator raising stuff to different powers? Not on my calculator. Okay. Oh, yeah. Let's take our calculators and learn a little something if you don't know how to do this with your calculator. Okay. 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 Most calculator, I shouldn't say most, but most of the calculators nowadays, nowadays these calculators are just amazing. You've got this little carrot button that has this little, right here, little upwards arrow. That's how we're going to go ahead and raise something to a power. If you don't have that, then you're going to have a button that looks like um, X raised to the Y, something like that. Okay, so to practice this, let's go ahead and go 1.65 raised to the 4.7. Go ahead and take 1.65 raised to the 4.7. What do you get? 10.52. So what's weird is to think that not only can we raise something to the fourth <laughs> power, but we can also raise to the 0.7th power. So we can say, I don't want to multiply by, by 1.65 a full fifth time. Just most of it's it's kind of funky. We'll get to all that later on. Okay. So then, um, so then when you're trying to figure out, like say if I say the um, sixth root of 117.649, Right now, I, I, don't want to, I don't want to teach you how to do that with your calculator yet. I just want to do this trial and error. Something times itself six times that gives me that, it's just a trial and error situation. Okay? So, 117649. Why well, don't you try it? 3 raised to the 6th. Oh, no, that's not near big enough. 5 raised to the 6th. Oh, that's not big enough. Can anybody figure it out? Seven. And that's just a trial and error situation. Okay? So this would be seven. Because what I did was I realized that seven to the sixth gives me that uh, 117,649. Okay? So then the sixth root of that is seven. We broke that up into something times itself six times. Okay? Okay. We do have a worksheet today. Um, before we do, and before I go on to the worksheet, I want to just ask, is, is there any, any questions that you guys have from yesterday? Anything I can, yes? 69. 69 on? 403.69. Okay, got it. To simplify that, okay. So I've got 4 to the negative 2, 5 to the 0, times 64, and you're going to take all that and cube it. Okay. What's 5 to the 0? One. 1. So that's gone. 4 to the negative 2 says divide by 4 twice. So I get 64 over 4 squared, which is 16, and I'm going to cube that. Remember, this means put it on the bottom. 64 divided by 16 is 4. 4 cubed, 4 times 4 times 4, 16 times 4, 64. You're welcome. Good job. To me, that made no sense. I don't... I'm so confused. 
Okay, on what part? Moving the 16 down? Getting this 16? Uh, yeah, pretty much, actually. Okay, well, this 4 to the negative 2, that means divide. Divide by 4 squared. So if I wanted to write it out a little bit better, 64 divided by 4 squared, all to the third. See how I took that 4 to the negative 2, put it on the bottom? That make sense? That's what negative exponents do, is if it's up top, I'm going to have to go ahead and divide by 4 squared instead. Okay. So now what I've got is just the, now I can go to the 64 over 16, because that's what 4 squared is. Just divided that. How many times 16 go into 64? Four times. And then I raise it to the power. So I moved it, and then I simplified from there. Yes, ma'am? Number 34, please. Number 34 on the first page. Okay, good. As I'm writing this, I saw the um, the uh, play um, said of the last play uh, against North Bend. I thought your defense on that one was phenomenal. Thank you. Where you stepped in front of that big girl, because that's where they were looking to go. I think you did a great job. Thank you. Great job. Okay, so negative 5 and 8, there's no common factor between them. C and... C to the second and C. C on top. D to the fifth and D to the fifth. Cancel. Those cancel. So do I have D's anymore at all? Nope. No D's. And then F to the zero is one, so that's gone also. So then I'm just left with that. Yep. Okay. 40 as well or 42? 40 as well. Okay, got it. And I'll tell you what, 40, somebody in the other class had an epiphany on 40, so I think it's great to go over these questions when you have them. Okay? Again, never hesitate. Man, I'm glad I watched the Simpsons movie. Why? Well, I learned what an epiphany is. Oh, really? Yeah. Good. I haven't watched the Simpsons in forever. There's some of that stuff anymore, I just, I don't know. Okay. So here's what I got. Let's go ahead and simplify my A's. A to the what? A to the second. Again, how are you doing that? Are you going negative two minus negative, or minus negative four? Okay. And again, I'm just trying to expose people to other ways. We go A to the fourth, A to the second, that's where they belong, A to the fourth, A to the second, and you can see there's two more up on top. Okay, B to the negative four, that's gonna end up up top. So that B to the fourth stayed, I got another B to the fourth that I moved up there, so I got B to the eighth. And then I got C to the five C's up there, three C's down there, so I'm gonna cancel just two, and then I'm gonna square that. Hence giving me A to the fourth, B to the sixteenth, C to the fourth. Find your mistake? <coughs> good. And good job asking questions. Nice job. <clears throat> Today. I still got one more thing I want to talk about together, but I know I got a couple people that need to leave here in uh, five minutes. Sisters, they're the worst. My sister one time, I'm act oh actually I'm recording, so I won't tell the story. Okay. Uh-uh. Okay. So well, hey, well just shush. Um I was just says my how my sister wasn't very nice to me sometimes. Here's what I want you to do. The other class kind of seemed like we weren't quite as far as I wanted them to be as far as just getting it down. And so I want to do this top part of 7.3. And then I want to do 10, 11, 12, 13, 16. And I'll talk about the fractions here in just a second. And a lot of this is just going to be trial and error, like we did with our, our calculator finding the uh, uh, 117,000, whatever, whatever. Um, just got to use your calculator to raise things at different powers and find out. 
what it might be. 19, 20, and 21, that's just a trial and error situation as well. Look at the other side. Okay. Scientific notation. Scientific notation, for it to be written in scientific notation, we must, well, let's say if I was going to do this. Number six. This is the problem I'm doing. I'm not saying do number six. But right now, um, what if I did 14.2 times 10 to the negative four? Is that right? Is that in scientific notation? can't be above 10. And it can't be below 1. So what we have to have is one non-zero digit, 1.42 times 10 to the, and here's the way I do it, this got smaller so this needs to get bigger, 10 to the negative 3. Okay. So that I think you've done enough, you could probably do fairly well. How do we do fractions? And then I'll turn you loose. Well, I'll just do an example real quick here. If I had, let's go 8 over 60, no, let's go 8 over 27, all raised to the one third. 8 over 27 raised to the one third. Here's what we would do. That'd be 8 raised to the one third over 27 raised to the one third. So you can take the cube root of the top and the cube root of the bottom. So that would mean I can take cube root of 8 and the cube root of 27. What is the cube root of 8? 2. Because that's what number times itself 3 times gives me 8. What's the cube root of 27? 3. Because 3 times 3 times 3 gives me 27. So that would be 2 thirds. So you'll just cube root the top and cube root the bottom. Or take the top to the fourth, the bottom to the fourth whatever. Okay? So. And then I will go over the, uh, the quiz here in just a little bit. Um, you guys already have them back, right? Yes. Okay. So you guys can go ahead and head on out. And if you need to watch the video to go over the quiz, that's fine. Um, but, um, If you got any questions, you'll just let me know. Good luck. Good luck. Keep it going. Yes. Good luck. I'll go ahead and show these two whites in camp here. Uh, Mr. Richard, yeah. When it comes to the 13, 15, 17 on the back side, mm -hmm. is that asking us to also times the two that are next to each other? Um, well, no, what we're going to do is we'll take the two and the 6.1, multiply those together, and then you're going to combine your, your powers of 10. Because with multiplication, you only dis you're thinking distribute wise. You only do that when there's a plus or minus. Here, you just think about reorganizing it, taking the things that are not powers of ten, multiplying them together. Things that are powers of ten, multiplying those together. Multiply or add. Multiply. Well, you're going to multiply them, but in multiplying, you add your exponents. Okay. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> There's the next three. Trevor. You can always pause it.
Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and um, really not going to do a lot of talking throughout this, uh, except just in a couple spots, because on your quizzes I went ahead and um, I got because um, you've taken it, but you just don't have it back, right? Um, I've already circled where you went wrong. Try to give you some feedback on that. This one, I think number one, uh, elimination, it screams out for elimination. Somebody did it in substitution. It got fraction ugly, but uh, hey, you can do it that way. Number two, whenever we plug something in, you've got to put it in parentheses, okay? You can't just um, plug it in and not distribute what's in front of it. There's a negative you've got to distribute. So that's what some of you did on that problem, okay? Three, um, people had some problems with negatives. I'd use substitution, but you can again do it however you want. And again, I circled where your mistake was. 14, disappointed that some people uh, struggle with the equations on that. We worked on that before because there's shots plus shots equals 14 shots. Two points from every field goal, three points from every three pointer gives me 13 points. Points plus points gives me points. So you get 12 and two. Five, the equation that everybody struggled with was is P plus six equals S. Here's the way I look at it. It says six more squash. So squash is up here, pumpkins are here. So squash is I sold more of. So how do I write them equal? S does not equal P, but S would equal P plus six. The number of squash I sold was six more than pumpkins. Number of squash I sold was six more than pumpkins. Do what you have to do to make them equal. I also saw this. S minus six gives me P. That would also work. Okay, we gotta be able to write that. This one, I think um, on the most part, went all right. It's 28 and 66. Again, circle where your issues were. Seven, eight, nine, um, I'm not gonna go over how to graph lines all the time. If you guys are still struggling with that, that's something we can work on, but I think on the majority, everybody's fine. Just watch your shading. I should be able to pick any point from the shaded region. It works in both. Okay, so this one, it's dotted, that's solid, shaded to the left, dotted, solid, shade to the right. And this one, I shade up to the, le up to the right and down to the left, so there is no solution. There's no points that they have in common. So say that. No solution. Okay. 
10. Y is less than 1. That's why it's dotted. Greater than X plus 1. My Y-intercept is 1. Slope is 1. You guys did really pretty well with graphing those. B, every time they make a statement, they have to spend less than $900. Write an equation. They have to keep it under, they want to do less than 200. So, um, they write an equation. And then they said more popcorn than nuts, or at least as many popcorn as nuts. So then write an inequality. Kind of going through this fairly quick, and if anybody wants to go over it more, you can. Um, C plus E is greater than 4. Cheap rocks plus expensive rocks gives me 4, at least 4 rocks. $4 for every cheap rock and $6 for every expensive rock. I got to keep my spending under 30 bucks. And then there's a bunch of different points that end up in that shaded region. 12, it's between 1600 and 2000. And 45 and 55, you get that little itty bitty region. That's the sweet spot. Bonus A, thing everybody struggle with is the coefficient. And here I've got three to the third is 27. Nine and nine gives me 81. So 27 over 81 should just give me a three on the bottom. So it's X over three, Y to the seventh. It'd be interesting to put that same type of problem on there now and see how you do. B, honestly a little disappointed in B. Disappointed in we don't we have some people that don't know how many days there are in a year. You can get better at that. 365. Leap year, now 366. Granted, some people were trying to figure it off of 52 or 48 um, weeks. Well, it's not exactly 52 weeks. It's not exact, you know, it's 365 days and then an extra day. And this right here, um, unit analysis. You're going to use that in chemistry all the time. It's a great way to stay organized, get used to it. It takes a difficult problem and makes it a lot easier. One year is 366 days. Each day is 24 hours. Each hour is 60 minutes. Each minute is 60 seconds. <laughs> Multiply it out, and there's 31 million seconds in a year. Leap year. Um, deadline's up there for next Tuesday. Um, and again, I'd be glad to go through this with you. Person's willing to work hard, that's good. I'll be glad to help you out.